Hello and welcome back to another movie reaction. Today we are watching 2001 A Space Odyssey. So this is one of those movies that I've heard about a lot as like a pivotal sci-fi movie film in history. And as someone who's done a bit of film history and is, you know, I quite enjoy films in general. I feel like I should have watched this by now, but it does mean that I get to watch it with you guys. So I honestly don't know much about this movie. Uh, I know it came out in 1968. I know it's sci-fi. <laughs> um, I've heard something about an AI called HAL, I think, if that's this movie. It could be another movie. I've seen the iconic shot of the hallway. But that's about all I know, like, it's about a space odyssey, I presume, so that'll be fun. Is it set in 2001? That would explain the title, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I really have no idea what to expect in this, but I do love old sci-fi. There's just something really fun about it, and I miss practical effects that old sci-fi uses. Uh, and this is apparently one of the really pivotal, important, big, old sci-fi films. Um, now, I'm on the tail end of a bit of a cold, so my brain not, may not be running as quickly as usual, but I'm sure I'll still enjoy this and we'll have fun with this. Um, it'll be really interesting because I've been watching a lot of classic Doctor Who lately, and that's been, you know mainly in this the 60s early 70s stuff at the moment uh and it'll be really interesting to see how different and similar a sci-fi film coming out in the same time is because like i'm sure it'll have a lot of the same elements as doctor who as a sci-fi show has but there'll be a lot of differences given that doctor who is a bbc show on TV versus, I presume, an American movie with a much larger budget and, and a much bigger, you know, much more resources available. Um, but yeah, I'll be really interested to see the, the similarities and the differences and the, the higher budget as well will make it a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, so yeah, I hope to watch I'm tr trying to do a movie a fortnight, so hopefully next fortnight we'll get another movie. Uh, every two weeks is the plan. And also, speaking of Doctor Who, uh, there's a new season coming out in about a month, which I'm looking forward to, and I'm hoping to kind of start gearing up to that and posting a lot of Doctor Who related stuff. Uh, I'm thinking like tier lists of characters and my thoughts on particular things. We'll see how it goes. Stick around if you like Doctor Who. Stick around if you like movies. I've got a list of movies I want to work through. So, And if you have any suggestions, I'm more than happy to hear them and we'll add them to my list. Anyway, that's enough of a pre-ramble from me. I think I'm ready to get in and watch this movie. It's two and a half hours, so let's sit back for a fun time, shall we? Let's go! That's very loud! Oh my goodness! Yeah, I'm watching this on YouTube again so I don't have captions, which is gonna be fun with 60s sound mixing, I'm sure. Well, that was exciting. Are there going to be any images? In oh, there we go. I need to. I need to slow down because this is a almost fifty-year-old movie, so I gotta enjoy the pacing and not expect it to be speedy like more modern movies. Fair warning. I'm going to spend half this movie being like, "Oh, how did they do that?" I like the. Uh bird sounds and insect noises in the background, kind of adding to the sense of calm and peace and quiet, which I'm expecting will be broken soon. 
Is this where that shot was like the lifting a rock up or something? I feel like there's an iconic shot here. They're really establishing a world that's empty. Which is a lot of fun. <laughs> that guy had a bad day. Tapir? They look like tapir. I like tapir. When I was a kid, I read a book that had a tapir in it, and I got really obsessed with them for a bit. But those don't have the uh, markings of the tapir that... They were like zebra stripe markings in the Amazon or something. Don't be rude. Those look like actual uh, apes. And tapir or whatever they are. <laughs> And an actual leopard or jaguar or whatever that is. I wonder where they got that footage from. Like, did they actually train animals to do that or? Because it looks really good. If those are costumes, they're really impressive costumes. I think they are costumes. I love how they're just rolling around. I feel like that would be a fun role to play. You're just like jumping around and rolling and. So they scared off the one group from the Watering Tribe. See guys, if you shout loud enough, then people will listen to you. And you'll get what you want. It's all about who shouts the loudest. That is an actual leopard. Not an actual zebra. But that is an actual cat. And I'm realizing I don't know the difference between leopards and jaguars and cheetahs and a lot, half the big cats in the world. <laughs> Oh, it's actually got a lip movement. Look at that. That's cool. Are they like animatronic mouths and stuff? See, this is why practical effects are so better than CGI. Because practical effects tend to hold up more. If something looks good in 1968, it'll still look good in 2024. But CGI tends not to age as well. Like, you can have something looking realistic with practical effects, but it doesn't always work that way with CGI. Ooh, immediate raise in tension with that background drone. Ooh, what is that? What is that? Touch it. Touch it. I want to see what happens. It's a really weird effect. This music is stressing me out. Ooh, that was a abrupt cut off. That was fun. What's he thinking? That's the shot I'm thinking of. That was a really well done scene. Like the music and the the cuts to the animal falling over and that was like you can tell it's significant but what was the metal stick all about what was the weird pole thing <laughs> i like how the tapir things are still just chilling even though these guys are actively killing them and eating them they're just eating their buddy in front of them like nice <laughs> Oh, they're trying another screaming match at a different tribe, I imagine. But these guys have weapons now. We're gonna have the first murder. Although, is it murder if it's a war like this? I feel like not quite. So they found a tool and figured out how to use tools and then immediately started using them to kill others. <laughs> and now we are in 2001, I guess? Not some kind of space station, which looks like it's not quite finished. Or maybe it's intentionally still scaffolding kind of thing in the outside ring. Yeah, don't want that floating around. That looks suspiciously like the Death Star 
uh, took inspiration from this. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. So you got kind of four compartments. Does that mean the gravity is different? Or is it like a reflect? No, it's not a reflection. Is it a centrifugal force thing? Because the, uh, it's spinning. Moon, American, Floyd. Awood R. Awood R. Floyd. Okay. This is a cool set. Oh yeah, they are, they were walking on the inside of the curve, so. Well, I think we can manage that. I suspect I there is something to do with centrifugal gravity. This is such fun set. What are you doing? Hey. Where's mummy? But I'll try to telephone again tomorrow. Now, will you tell her that? That kid is not going to remember yeah. to say that. Okay, sweetheart. <laughs> have a nice birthday tomorrow. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. That's the Happy most birthday. realistic kid I've seen in uh, <laughs> a show like this. <laughs> Then I must be off. Are you quite sure? Oh, quite sure, thank you. <laughs> that slow drag of... Some very reliable intelligence reports that quite a serious epidemic has broken out at Cleves. There's something apparently of an unknown origin. This is in fact what has happened. Sorry, Dr. Smith's love, but uh, I'm really not at liberty to discuss this. I feel like you should have said that. Before he asked the question. <laughs> Boy, the very best of luck to you. Oh, thank you. Uh, ladies. Hmm. Some shenanigans yeah, no, afoot. Good, no. So something's going on with this base he's going to, which I think is on the moon. He said he was going to the moon, right? <laughs> that is a ridiculous hat. But I guess it makes sense for uh, keeping hair out of the way and zero G. Liquid food, huh? Why do sci-fi people always find the most boring ways of creating food? Like, sure, it's efficient, but it's so boring. I just want to, like, eat a steak or something. And liquid seems like a inefficient way if you're having to conserve weight, because liquid can be kind of heavy. Huh. That's fun. I guess, yeah, because if there's no gravity, it doesn't matter which way she's facing, right? She's got the grip shoes. I wonder how they did that. Did they spin the camera and the set at the same rate and just... Because nothing looks like it's spinning. That, that is the kind of thing that makes me very excited. Like, when you're in space and you don't have to worry about gravity, why is everything up and down? You know, why is it all on a single two-dimensional plane. You've got the extra dimensions of not worrying about gravity or anything. Use it! I love it when shows actually use the lack of gravity and the lack of orientation. <laughs> Huge list of instructions for zero gravity toilet. Yeah, that, that would be something. <laughs> I like those helmets. Now this was before the moon landing, wasn't it? If it was 68. It'd be about a year before the moon landing. They really had high hopes for us. Like, people, people really had high hopes for what we would achieve with space. And we really haven't done anything in the last 50 years. <laughs> like, we got to the moon and we just kind of stopped there. Oh. <laughs> that's a lot bigger than I initially thought it was. Okay, that's a person over there. The, okay, I thought this was like human sized, but no, it's like an enormous, enormous space. <laughs> what is going on with that guy's suit? Why is it so checkered and stripy? That's distracting me. <laughs> Those are fun chairs. I just, I like it when sci-fi is fun. It gets too dark and gritty sometimes, and then it's, like, like now, less fun. Like, sci-fi doesn't bring to mind nowadays, like, bright colours and, and fun, exciting adventures. It's, it's a lot more dark and gritty. 
I don't know. I, I'm not hugely on the pulse of current sci-fi, I will admit. But I think there is something really fun about, like, 60s and 70s sci-fi that's bright-coloured and got silly aliens and fun chair designs. Um, like, I think there's something so much fun about that. And I miss, like, I, we should bring the fun back to sci-fi. I need to watch Star Trek, honestly. Any of you are troubled by the concern and... Anxiety, this right, so they're using the epidemic as a cover story, which meant that the way he kind of shut down it was like, I'm not allowed to say anything, enforced the idea that there was a cover story, that there was an epidemic. Uh, thank you, Dr. Floyd. Thank you. What is it? I can't, I miss slow pacing as well. I need to watch more old movies, or older movies, because there is something really nice about just settling in and just existing in a story as it slowly unveils like they've set up this idea of something happening but they haven't told us what yet you know we're 40 minutes into the movie 45 minutes into the movie and we barely know what's going on but it's been fun it's been an experience not just shoving a story at you I think more modern media tends to be very fast paced and that can be good like don't get me wrong I do enjoy it when you're right in the middle of something and you're having to you know figure it out and watch something go quite quickly but you lose something out when you just rush through a story instead of just letting it breathe and especially a story like this which I imagine is a lot more focused on the world building and concept of it than the story itself necessarily so it has been nice to just kind of exist in the world and get an idea of it without you know too much story diluting that good I think this is actual food uh, they look pretty good I well, like getting better at it all the time <laughs> or at least it looks like actual food those sandwiches gen maybe I'm just hungry, but those sandwiches genuinely look really nice. Do you have any idea what the No, the only thing we're sure Jug of is it was buried one million years ago. Maybe it has something to do with that metal stick that landed in the monkey land. I forgot about that for a second. That was weird. <laughs> but look at that set, like that still holds up today. That looks genuinely realistic. And really good. Practical effects, man. I love practical effects so much. Ah, but anyway, let's look at what is actually in there. Uh, it is the same kind of stick that the monkey saw. Pole thing. And we've got the same music going on. And after the apes saw that stick, they figured out how to use weapons and tools. So is it like an indication of man's evolution, the next stage of evolution kind of thing? It sounds like angry bees, and I love the effect. Just like the monkey. And they're taking a photo in front of it. Sure, okay. <laughs> That's great, I love that. Oh, yep, same. Ooh, not enjoying that. Okay. How long is this gonna last? Thanks. <laughs> Are they gonna find another stick? I so wanna know how they film all of these things, eh? Did they- did, again, are they moving the set? And he's just kind of running in spots? I think that's what they're doing. Is he spinning the entire set? So he's the only one awake? No. Also, is there a cut in between there, like two different sets or something? Because that is a conveniently placed pole to differentiate the two areas, maybe. It's that big tablet. HAL 9000 computers. Three of the uh, five men were put aboard asleep. 
Well, it's exactly like being asleep. You have absolutely no sense of time. The only difference is that you don't dream. As I understand that it, feels you only significant. Dream. And the heartbeat three times a minute. Body temperature is usually down to about three times a minute. Heartbeat. The that doesn't sound healthy, even if you're asleep. No 9,000 computer has ever made a mistake or distorted information. Now, I have seen some spoilers that this robot AI may not be the most trustworthy thing in the world, and this introduction to it is not boosting my confidence, because it seems very ominous and sinister, I won't lie. My mission responsibilities range over the entire operation of the ship, I can't tell if that food I they're eating to the looks use. really nice or is all I really unappealing. I'm very interested to see how all of these threads are going to tie together with the apes and then the thing on the moon. And now this thing that's getting set up. And I imagine there will be plenty of interesting discussion about the role of artificial intelligence and uh, what that it's got Excuse going on. Me, Frank. I love move. Hmm. Don't think you're gonna beat that uh how uh, there, my guy. The king one. Lots of time killing happening on this ship, but looks like it's gotta be so boring just existing. I would much rather be one of the guys in the hypernetic stasis chamber thing. Oh, I want to see behind the scenes of this so bad. Because do they have the camera rigged up on... Good evening, Dave. Because that's a Video full help. set. Everything's running smoothly. And you? Well, not too bad. Is I that middle line, work. like, got sketches. the camera attached yeah, I to see it? Them. I don't like these hell shots. Already in hibernation after four months of separate training on their own. Hmm. You're working up your crew psychology report. It's going to go 100% failure within 72 hours. Well, that's not good. So we got some suspicious circumstances on this mission. Does that mean they have not actually... They don't really know the survey team if they had different training and everything? That feels like it would be a bad time when they wake them up. Why is that spinning? There's certain things that spin and I'm like, why are you doing that? Or was it to reorient them to a different orientation of whatever? Ah, oh, there's the iconic shot. <laughs> Look at those colorful spacesuits. I, I don't know what it is, but I really like the helmet design. Uh, it's, it's a really cool helmet design. Maybe it's just because it's actually got a wide visor Kirby that Bart, you can see out of without being a bobblehead. Open the pod doors, help. That breathing is ADR. <laughs> Didn't quite line up with the dialogue, I don't think. The fact that it's not attached to the rest of the station is stressing me out a little bit. But I guess it has its own way of moving, probably. <laughs> it looks like it's going like this. It's like, please be attached to something. Don't just go floating. If you, there's, there's no way you can stop that if you just go floating. He's not attached to anything? Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. That's gonna work well in future. Side note, I do love the colorful... Oh, that's a cool shot. But I do love the colorful spacesuits and how bright colored they are. And I feel like Guardians of the Galaxy 3 drew some inspiration from these suits as well, because they had the bright colors and... Oh, that's terrifying. Did this guy just get into his spacesuit in solidarity? Because his helmet isn't even there. Is he just like, you're in your spaceship, I'll, uh, spacesuit, I'll get into mine as well. Let's go. <coughs> I gotta say, the transitions in this film are also really good. It all flows into each other really nicely. And yeah, the pacing in general, I'm really enjoying. It is, again, like it is slow, but that isn't a bad thing. There's enough of a mystery to keep you wanting to watch more, but it's letting you just relax and enjoy the adventure. I don't I like those HAL POV shots. 
We are skeptical ourselves, and we are running cross-checking routines to determine reliability of this conclusion. Okay. So, so how one, this is, is wrong? It can only be attributable to human error. Hmm. Oh, Frank, I'm having a bit of trouble with my transmitter and C-pod. I wonder if you'd come down and take a look at it with me. Yeah. See you later, huh? Is how... Okay, so are they going to go hide somewhere and talk about how when it, him not watching. I feel like it's going to have a pretty uh, wide reaching around the whole ship. That's really ominous. I don't know. Okay, now I'm Rotate about, please help. worried about both of them being inside the pod. That's... I, I feel like there should be some kind of protocol against not doing that, because if that pod gets ejected, then uh, the whole mission Stop is in trouble. Mission, please help. You know, of course, though, he's right about the 9000 series having a perfect operational record. So far. They do. Unfortunately, that sounds a little like famous last words. Yeah. And the Titanic was unsinkable. Well, I'm not so sure what he'd think about it. Hmm. This is some very ominous shots of old Harlow boy. Or was he reading their lips? Ooh. I thought it was going to be a lot more subtle that this AI may not be trustworthy, but nope, he's just immediately not trustworthy. <laughs> Still very interested, because we had like a 45 minute prologue, two prologues for the first, like almost half of this movie. So I'm very, very intrigued to see how that is all going to tie together. I'm going to put the thingy thing back in the thing, I see. I feel like we should have buttons like that just more often in regular life. Like, why are we going to big tablet screens that you, like, just swipe and touch something? Give me a big button I can push. It's way more satisfying. What's controlling the pod? Is it the guy on the ship, or is it Hal? Uh-oh. I'm suspecting it's Hal. Ooh, didn't like that. <laughs> oh no! Where's he going? Oh, I love the silence of it. Because he's being cut out. Like, the, the breathing stuff stopped as well. <clears throat> That's terrifying. Where is he off to? Come back. You're not finished. There's not much you can do with that. But see, this is why you should be attached to something. Because if he had a cable attaching him even to the pod, then he wouldn't have gone floating off like that. I'm sorry, Dave. I don't have enough information. Mm. Open the pod door, Hal. I think you might, Hal. But, sir, put your helmet on. Do not go out there without a helmet on. My guy! You are not going out there without your helmet on. I don't like how it keeps showing us that. Exp He's not going out without... <laughs> Sir, even if this is just a routine mission, if you're going into space only in a small pod that is probably controlled by the AI you're not trusting right now, put your helmet on! Okay, well he's gonna die. It's interesting because this is a really tense, dramatic moment, but there hasn't been any music. Uh, and the whole movie has been using music very scarcely. Which adds to... Like, it, it gives the whole thing a sense of emptiness, and, which works with the space thing, I think. But it does mean that tensions aren't risen as much as they might have been. But also I feel like it wouldn't quite fit to have dramatic, tense music happening here. Because so far I think all of the music we've had has been that, that like, buzzing, humming <coughs> kind of thing. Or the classical music. The lack of music just makes it all feel so much more ominous and empty and it makes it feel like space because space is big and empty and etc. So yeah having the lack of music really enhances that feeling I think even if it does make it a little harder to engage with maybe. The um 
They look. It looks like there's eyes on the top of that helmet. I just really rad. <clears throat> this is, in fact, the opposite of rad. I think that guy has really pretty eyes. I keep noticing his eyes. You got him. Got him in your grabbing abba claws. Not yet. Okay, there he is. Having the worst day of his life so far. See, how do they record that as well? Is it like a green screen kind of a thing? Or, uh... No, that looks like it's an actual set. So... Are there wires? See, it looks like a face. It's got... He's got, like, eyes and a long nose thing. It looks like kind of a dinosaur -y face. Yeah, now nah, I was just thinking, I don't like the fact that Hal is now alone on the ship, essentially. What's he gonna be doing? Uh-oh. <sighs> that gave me a fright, my goodness. That was really loud. <laughs> He's gonna kill them. Oh no, that's not good. Oh, look at the cardiovascular. Oh, that's... Oh no. Uh-oh, everything's in the red. <laughs> Straight lines, that's not good. <laughs> Oopsies. I love the shots of how. Because it just feels so sinister, but it's just like this dome with a light in it. Hello, Hal, do you read me? I think he does, but he's not listening. Hello, Hal, do you read me? Hello, Hal, do you read me? What is its motive, though? And Hello, how does this tie into the do metal me, pole pillar things? A primitive day. I read you. This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. Ooh. I don't know what you're talking about, Hal. That's terrifying. Being trapped out like that. And he can't even go out and try to break in because he didn't bring his helmet. I'll go in through the emergency airlock. Yeah. How are you going to do that without, without your helmet? Space helmet, Dave. We're going to find that rather difficult. What was that? Said? I would argue with you anymore. I said. Open the doors. <sighs> That's what I said. That's terrifying, though, Ow. being trapped in that pod like that. Because <clears throat> what can you do? You just kind of sit there until you starve. He's probably already dead. What's he up to? Is he going to try ramming it? <coughs> Letting Dave float close enough to maybe grab it and get in? But I don't know if Dave is alive anymore. Okay. He's just going off into space. Bye bye This movie really likes its lingering shots, doesn't it? <laughs> You're not going to fit in there. Is he going to open it with the pod and then try to jump through real fast? I feel like that's probably his best bet. <coughs> Because if he can get through fast enough, he might be able to survive. <laughs> but that does seem to be the play here. The fact that he had to let go of Frank to do this was a bit, a bit rough as well. But uh, it became very uh, bad options are the only options real fast. <laughs> Ooh. Ow. Oh no, don't go. Oh yeah, okay. Now close, close the hatch, yep. That worked. He basically exploded himself in there. I, I just, I love how you keep getting these shots of how. And there's no emotion because it's a robot and it's a, a circle in another circle. But you can understand and there's such an ominous feeling to it. Now he's got a helmet on. I really think I'm entitled to an answer to that question. Oh, shush your mouth. You don't even have a mouth. Shush your voice. <laughs> oh, we got shaky cam going on now as well. I feel much better now. Hmm, sure you do. I really do. Oh, I love the reflection of him in the uh, thing there. I can see you're really upset about this. Yeah, think? <laughs> Take a stress pill and think things over. Oh, this is how AI would act, isn't it? It's like, 
Just calm down. You are overreacting. I'm know sensing I've made some heightened very poor emotions. decisions recently, but I can give you my complete assurance that my work will be back to normal. I want to see someone redo this entire movie, except instead of Hal's I've voice. I've still got the greatest enthusiasm it's and confidence the in the mission. TikTok lady voiceover and I thing. Want to help. Maybe I'll edit a scene to do that in the Dave, with that voice. Stop. When I edit this. I know everything hasn't been quite right with me. But I can assure you now. Very confidently. That it's going to be all right again. I feel much better now. I really do. I can feel it. On the 12th of January, 1992. 1992, they were... My instructor uh, was Mr. Langley. Very optimistic, weren't they? And he taught me to sing a song. Ooh. If you'd like to hear it, I can sing it for you. It's called Daisy. Oh. Daisy. Gave me chills. All for the love of you. They did teach a computer to sing this, it didn't they? Good day, gentlemen. Oh. What's this? Who's this? That's not how. This is a pre recorded briefing. Oh? Now that you are in Jupiter's space, and the entire crew is revived. <laughs> it can be told to you. Except for a single, very powerful radio emission aimed at Jupiter. Oh. Okay. So it sh sent a message to Jupiter? Was it looking for human life that was sufficiently advanced? And then... Because it seemed to have disappeared when it was on Earth, right? I want to answer... There's the buzzing monolith noise again as well. Ooh! That looks unnatural. What is it? Is it a ship? It's just a slab floating in space. See, how does Hal tie into all of this, though? Because we've got the thing four million years ago, which then seemed to transport to the moon. Like it was on Earth, but then it was on the moon, if that was the same monolith. Because presumably if it had stayed on Earth, they would have found it on Earth. And then we got this floating slab in space. Which is connected to that thing in the first bit and in this bit. And... Huh. Excuse me, um, but yeah, how does Hal tie into all of that? Like, why, why is that such a big part of what this movie is? Did the monolith thing make Hal malfunction? Oh, that's interesting. It fits, like, right into the solar system kind of thing. How big is it? What is going on now? Where are we? See, what, what is happening? What's going on? Where are you going? He's going through that tunnel? Is that the slab? Or is he going through space? Ooh, creative. It's a black hole kind of thing? Hyperspace precursor? What is going on right now? Almost looks like a time vortex in Doctor Who. Maybe it is a time vortex. Sixties was big with time travel, wasn't it? Where are we going? Oh, now we're on the side. It's fascinating how different that effect cre immediately feels when you're when it's up and down like that instead of side to side. 
Oh, that's an interesting shot, given all of the shots of Hal we've had. That also is an interesting shot, given all the shots of Hal we've had. Is this the galaxy? Big Bang? I'm fixating on the time travel thing. But it does look suspiciously like creation, or world being created. Well, he's still alive. Ooh. What's going on here? My guy is having the worst trip of his life right now, and I feel like I am as well. What is going on? <laughs> Ooh. Some shape. Where are we? My first thought is that we've gone back to when the apes were, you know, in the first couple of scenes and stuff. But we could be Jupiter, but Jupiter's a gas giant, isn't it? This looks like an actual rock planet place. Albeit with a weird filter on it. That looks like a city? Or is it just structures? Like rock structures? What's the significance between the different colors, or is it just different colors? This is taking a while, and I want some answers. Like, you guys are having fun playing with the filters, I can see that, but, like, what is going on right now? It just keeps going. <laughs> this is just gonna be the next 20 minutes of movie? Is just this landscape with weird color filters on it? Maybe it blinks, it changes color. Ooh, <gasps> natural! Something natural! Look at that! We took the fil- okay, what? What? <laughs> what? Where is he? What is going on? Okay. The lights in the floor indicate that this is not actually a period place. Oh. Who dat? That's him. But old? And now the pod is gone? Having the lighting on the floor like that would stress me out so much, I think. I don't think I would enjoy that. So when he looks in the mirror, he's young, but in the world, he's old? I hesitate to say real world, because who knows what this is. Well, this is a fun shot. And it's making me very nervous. Okay. Who's this? Can you please give me some answers? I want to know what's happening right now. It's gonna be him even older? Or is it Hal in human form? Again with the long and lingering shots. It definitely has a certain vibe to it, this movie. And now he's this guy. The younger version of him disappeared again. He keeps seeing older versions of himself, and then the younger version disappears, or something like that. This is getting annoyingly close to the end of the movie, and there are still no answers, and I feel like it's going to be one of those movies that you're left with, like, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> He's got actual food, though. Look at that. None of this... Uh, and that feels significant, because food was shown a number of times throughout this movie. Oh. There he is. Now he's lying in bed. Even older. We're gonna follow this guy? Not that he'll go anywhere. I think I've seen references to this scene. In Phineas and Ferb of all things. Oh, there's the slab again. <laughs> oh? What is... There's some time shenanigans going on, that's for sure. Back to Earth? We have the dramatic music thing. What is this? Like, well, is that the baby him? He ascended back into a baby? Is it the next phase of human evolution, maybe? Because the music seems to imply something like that. If we connect it to the music when the monkey was, or the ape was seen using the weapon tool. Okay. 
Okay. Yep. That. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. I'm gonna need to process that one a bit. Well, that certainly was a concept movie, uh, and I can see a lot of how it influenced other sci-fi films. Um, I think it definitely was a concept movie in that it was focusing more on a feeling or a vibe <clears throat> in exploring a particular idea than a specific story. Which did mean it dragged a little bit at points, like there were, the, the, especially near the end, I think that psychedelic, colourful sequence could have been cut down by like 10 minutes, because that was really long. <laughs> um, yeah, still don't quite get what happened, um, and I'm sure there'll be lots of discussion about it around. So we kind of have a couple of different aspects. We have like the very early human ape creatures seeing this monolith thing. And then they learned how to use tools. So I'm seeing it as something like the next phase of human evolution kind of thing, where they saw this monolith and then were able to understand how to use tools, etc. Um, and then at the end, they found the monolith or the source, uh, and there was human evolution. I don't that I'm like that last sequence was so weird. And then we have the robot thing going on in there as well, which I'm sure ties into it somewhere, and I'm gonna have to reach back to my English lit days to analyze everything. <laughs> but I guess something about the tools that the early apes used, and then Hal as a tool that kills humans, uh, is it the humans wielding the tool that kills, or the tool itself that kills. But Hal didn't really seem to have anything controlling it, it was just kind of went rogue and malfunctioned or something. And then there was weird time shenanigans going on, where he kept getting older and older and then became a baby again. And then it was looking at Earth. I don't know. <laughs> like, the themes that I'm getting, which I can't quite put into words how they feed into, the, how everything feeds into the themes, but the themes that I'm getting are like human evolution, you know. Uh... I mean, there's definitely the artificial intelligence thing in there, but I feel like that's less of a... This is the concept. I mean, they definitely explored the concept of artificial intelligence, but less of the point. Unless it was, and I haven't quite figured out how to connect everything. I am going to be so fascinated by the comments in this video. There's going to be some interesting discussion going on, that's for sure. Um, I did enjoy the slow world building. Um, I, I liked that the first half of it really let you breathe and exist in the world. Uh, and things that maybe don't necessarily add to the story, like the one guy who came and was, um, you know, he called his daughter and had a message to Earth, and I was expecting that to come back, but it didn't really, you know. You just knew that you could call Earth and that he was away, that he had a family, um, connected you a bit more to the character uh, and it just the world felt very full in a way that wasn't forced upon you uh, there wasn't long exposition dumps there wasn't anything like that you know you got the the news broadcast kind of giving you an idea of what the mission was all about you got 
everything came across really naturally and built the world out but in a way that you didn't feel lost but you also didn't feel like it was exposition dumping to you which i really enjoyed um i enjoy slow world building like that the lingering shots and things did start dragging a little bit as you got more and more into it with all the space walking and then the weird psychedelic trip near the end and it did feel like it dragged quite a lot towards the end um was that slab artificial intelligence is it like some kind of alien that's overseeing earth and uh like has its hand on everything and was influencing human evolution and everything like that and how does the ai tie into human evolution you know the apes that used weapons were able to take the watering hole the AI is is has the AI got something to do with that you know survival of the fittest I feel like this is a film that I'm gonna have to sit on for a while and see what other people say about it before I fully understand it but I had a lot of fun even if it did drag a little bit I think near the near the end um Yeah, I don't quite know what to say. Um, I would love to see your thoughts on that film, because there are a lot of thoughts to be had, I'm sure. Um, and, and, and let me know how it was made. I think I saw a documentary on Prime about the making of it that I'll have to sit down and watch at some point, because those sets were like all complete sets, and I'm pretty sure they were spinning the sets to make it, to make it look like people were you know standing on the walls or like gravity wasn't affecting them or something i'm pretty sure they were spinning the sets but let me know how they actually did that because i'm fascinated to find out and that kind of thing makes me really excited like i love seeing how they do effects like that and and how they make these kinds of films so he went to where this thing was and then got s taken outside of time or something and then ascended is what I'm getting basically yeah um I'm not gonna be able to put my thoughts if I have any thoughts brain empty I'm not gonna be able to put anything properly into words at the moment I don't think so I think I shall leave this video here I'm very much looking forward to the discussion of this one uh, and I hope you enjoyed watching me get really confused. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Another movie in a fortnight. Not quite sure what that one's going to be yet. Um, I do have a list. And I will start working through the list. Let me know. Maybe I'll put a poll up and see what people want. Um, anyway. <clears throat> thank you guys for watching. Stick around for more content. I'm hoping to get things pumping out a lot more at the moment if my schedule and timetable allows it and nothing comes up um i'm currently job hunting so i have a lot of spare time but if i find a job i won't have a lot of spare time so until i find a job i will be hopefully getting a lot happening on this channel um lots of doctor who content coming uh yeah uh, hopefully things that aren't just reaction videos as well. I have some ideas, gotta actually sit down and do them. So stay tuned. Expanse this weekend. Uh, another movie in a fortnight, hopefully, Lord willing. And yeah, Doctor Who stuff coming. So stick around. Lots of exciting things. Subscribe if you haven't. Hopefully we're, we're getting really close to a thousand and it would be really cool to get there before the new Doctor Who season starts in May. So if you could check us a subscribe, that would be amazing. Aha. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. You guys head off, grab a drink, get a snack, take a nap, go for a walk, go do something that isn't on YouTube, and I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.